controller-based wireless architectures, RRM is achieved by the controller communicating with the APs and making changes accordingly. In our controllerless model, the APs communicate amongst themselves via messages sent both over the air and over the wire on a communication VLAN with inter-AP coordination or IAPC. This information is used by each AP to build and maintain an RF neighbor table that helps them make decisions when it comes to RRM, among other things. Channel selection. Channel selection is important to avoiding interference. What makes things more difficult is that in the world of wireless, change of RF environment over time is almost a guarantee, which may result in a need to change channels for optimal performance from time to time. Automatic channel selection, or ACS, has two aspects to it, boot time and periodic. Boot time ACS, as you may have guessed, occurs when the AP initially boots and uses data from longer, more thorough channel scans. A randomized wait timer is also present so that even if all three APs you see here booted up at the same time, the chance they would pick the same channel is minimalized. Periodic ACS occurs every selection interval, which is configurable and by default is 12 hours. This uses constant scanning data from the third radio of our tri-radio APs or with background scanning in our dual radio APs. If a change is needed due to performance impacting conditions on multiple APs, a randomized timer is again used to minimize the chance that APs select the same channel. Candidate channels are chosen based on an aggregate score of the following criteria. Number of BSSIDs. More BSSIDs means more contention among APs on that channel. This takes into consideration the situation where a lightly loaded BSS will still use the airtime with beacons and other management frames. RSSI. A neighbor whose RSSI is high is more likely to be physically close, so it would be best if we don't select the same channel. This results in co-channel APs being further away from each other, improving both performance and channel reuse. Non-Wi-Fi Utilization Channels are favored that have the least amount of non-Wi-Fi utilization from devices such as microwaves, telecom antennas, and Bluetooth devices. Channels with over 40% of non-Wi-Fi utilization are immediately disqualified. Lastly, channel overlap and bonding. Scores are calculated depending on if there are neighboring APs on the same or adjacent channels, including secondary channels in the case of bonding. Dynamic channel selection, or DCS, occurs when a high level of interference is detected on the current channel. This mechanism takes into account both co-channel and adjacent channel interference, giving CCI more weight. When a change of channel needs to be made, it goes through the same channel selection process as ACS, the difference is that this is trigger-based versus occurring at boot time or regular intervals. So what happens with clients when there is a change of channel? This is where channel switch announcements come into play. During periodic ACS, the AP will send five beacons with channel switch announcements to inform clients before switching to the new channel. This is not done in the case of DCS because remember it is a trigger-based mechanism that goes off of interference. So there's no point in attempting to send CSAs out when there is high interference. Also, Arista APs are client aware, meaning that if the AP detects voice or video calls when periodic ACS begins to initialize a channel change, it will be deferred to allow the voice or video call to not be interrupted. Transmit power selection. Arista APs will automatically adjust their transmit power to minimize interference with the neighboring Arista APs. Via IAPC, APs inform each other how loud they are to each other, and this information is added to the RF neighbor table. Once this information is added, the AP then makes a decision to increase or decrease its transmit power based on how loud it is to its neighbors and to how many neighbors it is loud to. The two configuration parameters involved here are the loudness RSSI, which is by default negative 75 dBm, and the neighbor count, which is by default three, but for the purposes of this example, let's assume it's one. If the loudness RSSI is exceeded for more neighbors than the neighbor count, like it is here, then the transmit power is reduced. For dense deployments, the neighbor count is typically configured higher than the default value of 3. Speaking of dense deployments, this is a perfect segue into smart client load balancing. In areas where APs are densely deployed to provide bandwidth to a large number of users in a smaller area, clients will often blindly connect to the AP with best signal strength, resulting in a few heavily loaded APs while others are not utilized at all.
Smart Client Load Balancing leverages 802.11k to address this issue. It doesn't disassociate established clients, but instead determines when new associations should temporarily stop being accepted, forcing new clients to look for other available APs, hence distributing the load. While this technically may mean that some clients won't be connecting to the best AP in terms of signal strength, overall the client performance should be improved by contending with less clients sharing that same AP. Smart Client Load Balancing is made up of what I will unofficially call several stages or components, including initialization, neighbor evaluation, client rejection, and desperate client support. When a client attempts to associate or roam to an AP, that AP determines if it has sufficient capacity. It does this by comparing the number of clients it has versus the minimum client threshold parameter, which the default is 30. Once this threshold is met or exceeded, the Smart Client Load Balancing algorithm initializes. As channels are scanned for RRM or WIPs, Arista APs build RF neighbor tables. This table includes the current client count, which is gleaned from beacons of nearby Arista APs. When Smart Client Load Balancing is triggered, the AP determines how many neighbors are acceptable alternatives. A neighbor is determined to be acceptable if it meets either of two criteria. The client count is less than the minimum client threshold, which the default is 30, or the client count is greater than the minimum client threshold and the client count difference is greater than the minimum client count difference threshold, which by default is five. So in this example for AP1 in the middle, AP3 is an acceptable alternative because its client count is less than the minimum client threshold. But what about AP2? AP2 is also acceptable, because while its client count is greater than the minimum client threshold, the client count difference between AP2 and AP1 is greater than the minimum client count difference threshold. If at least half of the neighboring APs in the RF neighbor table are acceptable alternatives, the AP will begin rejecting associations with an 802.11 status code 17. Association denied because AP is unable to handle additional associations. This will encourage clients to join other APs. Some clients, however, do not support the 802.11 status code 17 and will instead continually try to associate with a given AP that is refusing additional connections. In this case, rather than never allowing the client to connect, a counter is started and if the number of retries exceeds the configured max association retries within a time period called the desperate client interval, the client is considered a desperate client and will be allowed to bypass the smart client load balancing algorithm and associate. This status will be maintained for 24 hours before requiring reevaluation. This feature is enabled on a per SSID basis and is generally recommended for both data and guest SSIDs as long as they aren't supporting real time applications such as video or voice. Smart steering. The sticky client problem occurs when a client moves from one AP coverage area to another but is stuck to the AP it previously associated with, resulting in poor performance until the client either loses signal completely or otherwise causes a new association to occur. With smart steering, we help speed up that process intelligently by deauthenticating clients based on a RSSI threshold over time. The client is steered only if the client RSSI is below the steering RSSI threshold for at least the roam initiation interval, which is by default 10 seconds, and the client RSSI is below the steering RSSI threshold for at least the number of packets configured for the roam initiation packet threshold, which by default is five. These checks prevent unnecessary steering due to transient drops in RSSI and ensure a good sample size of sent packets during the roam initiation interval. Additionally, the steering attempts threshold parameter prevents excessive steering attempts causing poor performance. Once a client has exceeded this, it is placed into a steering blackout period, which is 15 minutes by default. Band steering. Band steering steers dual band clients that support both 2.4 and 5 GHz to the 5 GHz band for better performance and less interference. Like other steering methods, the APs do this intelligently as to not impact overall performance. Dual band clients are always steered to 5 GHz unless the 5 GHz RSSI of the client is very low, crossing the steering RSSI threshold, or the 5 GHz radio is already excessively loaded compared to the 2.4 GHz radio determined by the band steering client load difference parameter.
In these cases, the AP will steer to the 2.4 GHz radio instead to balance performance. Like with smart steering, to prevent issues where clients are steered too frequently, when the steering attempt's threshold is exceeded, the client is placed into a steering blackout period. Thank you. Thank you.